we are turning by the book of 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, that's the same we have, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Got it, say amen. Amen. Uh oh. Hey guys, say hold on a minute. Chapter 4. Amen. Have you got it, Savannah? <laughs> I didn't say Ezra chapter 4, I said. <laughs> First Thessalonians chapter 4. Alright, everybody got it, say amen. Amen. Hey guys, hold on. Everybody on the same page. Good. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Okay, I'm good. Verse 16. Amen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the Amen. dead Christ shall rise first. Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, God, we gather here tonight, Lord, it's an absolute honor. God, an absolute privilege, Father. God, to get to come together, Lord God, one more time. God, to count among the land, Lord God, of the living, Father. And God, I thank you, Lord, right now. God, none of us is in hell, Father. I thank you, God, Lord, that we all have a, have a chance if we're not right with you, God, to make things right, Lord. And God, I thank you, Lord God, for those here that's redeemed, Father. God, I pray you give them strength, Lord God, for their journey, Lord God. The, 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 the path, Lord God, that God has laid out before them, God. And Lord God, give them the strength, Lord God, the Father we need, God, Lord, to make it, Lord. God, I pray that all you can, God, that you come by tonight, Lord God, offer encouragement, Lord God, somebody's way, Father. And God, offer hope is all you're able to do, Lord. God, somebody needs to heal tonight, Father, I pray you touch and heal as long as you can, Lord. And God, I pray you forgive us, Lord, all, God, that we've done wrong, God. All what we let you down, Lord God. And Lord God, help us, Lord God, to not hold any grudges, Father, and forgive all those, Lord God, that wronged us as well, Lord. God, I just beg you, Lord God, to have your way, God. And I thank you once again for your precious son, Jesus, Lord God. Lord, what a lovely name, the name Jesus, Lord God. I bless your holy name, Lord. We love you, thank you, in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Walk around the house, hey, it's good to see you on Sunday night. You and a barefoot, Father. Keep doing whatever you're doing, I don't mind. Just keep going, I don't hate 
Miss, whatever you get done, let me know. We'll get started. First, that's on chat Can't be quiet. <laughs> first day, I went out with you. First test on chapter four. First test on chapter four. Ken, I guess, wanna talk. You gotta be a help tonight on several followers. What's gonna happen to you when the trumpet sounds? Ain't but one or two things gonna happen. One of them you gonna like, and one of them you ain't gonna like. Oh, yeah, one of them you ain't gonna like at all. But. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, we'll back up here quite a bit first because now a lot of times I think we take one verse and focus too much on it and try to take it, twist it to mean what we want to mean, but we've got to look around. Because there's always something leading up to it. And we got to, we got to, there's something leading up to what's going to happen here. And he says, furthermore. So I like the word furthermore. Because furthermore means a couple of things here. It means that it ain't ending there. There's more to come. And also, furthermore, is usually a conclusion about something. And, and he takes off and he says, Furthermore, then we beseech you, or, or beg you, brethren, exhort you, or encourage you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us, how you ought to walk, and please God, so ye walk, excuse me, you should abound more and more. So first of all, he tells us, he said, as a child of God, you ought to know how that you ought to live. Yeah. Say you ought to know as a child of God how to live. Oh no. Oh no. When the Spirit of God replaces your conscience, then He tells you how you need to live. Bible says He knows do good, doeth not even sin. How do you know the Holy Ghost that dwells inside of every believer lets you know ahead of time, not while you're doing it, ahead of time what you're doing right or not. And the Bible said this, though. He said, look, he said that we have received that. We know how we ought to walk. We know we ought to please God. And matter of fact, he said, so you would to buy more and more. And you know, it's funny because the closer that we get to God, we realize the less things that we, the less things in the world that revolve around our lives. You know, right now we're talking about this morning, how much time we spend with things. Yeah. Look at how much time we spend with everything but God. And yeah, what means more to us? You know, I, I, I'm ashamed of that. I, I stand up here and be the first to admit that I wish I spent as much time with God as I do everything else. Yeah, so true. But the Bible says here that we ought to grow closer and closer and closer. Verse 2 says, For you know what commandments we give you by the Lord Jesus. Mm. So once again, tells us this. Here's a couple of things. That you know who you are, excuse me, how you ought to live as a child of God. And number two, you've been given these commandments ahead of time. So they like it's going to take you by surprise. God's already instructed us on how we ought to live. Now whether or not we go through that and live for him, that's on us. Yes. Goes on to verse 3 and says this way. <coughs> he said, for this is the will of God. Anytime you see that, you better pay attention. Because a lot of things don't always directly apply to you, but when you hear it say, this is the will of God, there'll be something on the inside of you because I'll go, well, if I ain't gonna, I'm going to mess up everything else, I'm not going to mess this part up. But this is the will of God, even your sanctification, Amen. that you should abstain from fornication. Yes. Fornication. You know, we see that Everybody freaks out in the church. Nobody wants to talk about sexual morality in the church. Come on. Yeah. See that fight has got? Because it makes people uncomfortable. And that's why God addresses it when nobody else wants it. Yeah. It's ironic because the sin of fornication, we see all the different kinds of Sins and Corinthians and tell us who won't enter the kingdom of God. It's just liars and thieves and effeminate and it's just uh, uh, murder. It just goes through and on and on and on and on and on and, and gives us a list of who all. But it's funny how when it comes to something like this right here, we don't want to talk about fornication. Matter of fact, the Bible said you should abstain from fornication. When you abstain from something, you completely cut it out. You can't, can't get away. You cut it out. You know, and, and I told y'all, it, it embarrassed her. She's here. Might be good that she ain't here. But I, I thought about the 
I ain't always live right. And I ain't by myself. Can I get a witness? <laughs> and the first thing, I'll never forget this. This is how I knew I was going to marry Shelly. The first thing she did when she got saved was she cut me off. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's right. Laugh like you want to, but you know what? Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's right. She was going to take a stand and side with Jesus. Whether she was with me or not. I applaud that because I don't tell you something. There's something to be said. That's right. The Bible said to abstain, get away from, that's right, cut off and completely do away with. When you're a child of God, we're to do away with or cut back all those sins in our lives and get away from them. If it means you got to go through life by yourself and pray God, go through life by yourself. He said, but you must abstain from fornication. And see, nowadays, Everybody's scooping up real close and sharing the same address and they they call it co-inhabitants. God still calls sin. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. Man told me, said, can you show me in the Bible? Well, it said it wrong, live together. I said, nobody show you what's wrong to have sex for marriage. You can't put a man and a woman in the house together. Come on. You can say you sleep at separate ends of the house, but sooner or later, something's going to happen. One's going to jump in the bed with us. That's why the Bible says you got to cut this stuff out. Matter of fact, the Bible says to abstain from all appearances of evil. It said if it looks bad, get away from it. So that's what it said. He said, matter of fact, Verse 4, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Amen. Now you must understand, that vessel means this. Yes. The problem nowadays is, Come on. we love to give out birth control, Come on. but don't want to practice no self-control. If my grandma was alive today, She'd be 108 years old. This is what she'd tell you. If you don't want to get pregnant, don't have sex. Amen. She'd say passing out condoms ain't the answer. No. Birth control ain't the answer. She said no sex is the answer. I don't tell you what, I thank God for the old generation that was still staying up. And look a 12 year old in the face. I'm going to tell you something, boy. You better stay away from them girls. Because yeah. <laughs> they're going to get you in trouble. <laughs> and the Bible said here to abstain from fornication. The Bible said this. That we ought to know. We ought to know. We should know how to possess, how to control this. What gets us in trouble with anything? This. Why? Because we're not controlling and possessing this. Like God has called us to do. Yeah, come on. Come on. He said, and this is the beautiful part of it, every one of us should know how. Come on. What they tell me is that none of us don't have an excuse. That's right. That's right. That's right. We don't. None of us. <laughs> Matter of fact, excuses won't even be brought up on just today. So if you've been practicing on yours, you better come up with something else. Because that ain't going to work. He said this well. He said, verse 5, Not in the lust of concepts, but even as a Gentile, which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. He said, not only is sexual misconduct, he said, you shouldn't even do your brother wrong. Here we go. If you brother gives you ten dollars and owes you five dollars, and you tell him it still owes you ten, what are you doing? You defrauding your brother. Mm -hmm. I look at how often we defraud our brothers and our sisters. How often we do them wrong. I'm telling you, it ain't just taking money like we think. It's when you don't stand up for it. Yeah. If you know something to be a lie that's being said about a brother or sister in Jesus and you don't stand up for them and clear it up, yeah. you've yeah. just defrauded your brother or your sister. Yeah. 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 
Truth. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. I said what I said again. If you ever anywhere, and you hear them running down, somebody that you know was serving the Lord, and you know it's a lie, and you don't stand up for them, you are a punk and you are a sissy. Yeah. Yeah. And God did not save us to be punks and sissies. That's why he raised us up and saved us to be warriors in the kingdom of God and to take a stand when nobody else will. Bible said this way. He said, matter of fact, he said, verse 7, for God had not called us to be unclean, but under holiness. Amen. Not church of God and Christ, not the Caroline congregation of holiness, not the men, not the best. He said, but holiness in general. Yes. That's what God is looking for. Amen. God's not looking for a religion. God's looking for a relationship. Get a, get a, get a witness right there. And he said, holiness. He said, we should know. The Bible said it is, be ye holy for I am holy. Yeah. Right. Scripture said, without holiness, no man shall see my face. Right. So Amen. when the Bible said here that we are to ascribe after or we ought to want to be or achieve holiness, it's because we ought to want to be like God is. That's right. yeah. So often in life we set our goals too low. I don't want to be like nobody down here. I want to be like Jesus. Can, can you it? I want to walk like Jesus. I want to talk like Jesus. I want to breathe like Jesus. I want everything I do to reflect Jesus. And it said this. As a matter of fact, he tells us this. He said, verse 8, he therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man but God, who hath forgiven us under his Holy Spirit. We always worry about whether or not somebody will accept or reject. In life today, it's still the same story, accept or reject. And how somebody treats us, whether they accept us or reject us, ends up impacting how we're going to treat them. Yeah. But he said this. He said, honey, when you get rejected for my name's sake, they're not rejecting you. He said, don't take it personal. He said, they rejected me. He said, you let me do that part. Matter of fact, it's kind of ironic because you just brought up a while ago talking about the Avengers movie. God said, I'm the Avenger. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And, and if you see there, it's Avengers singular. Because <laughs> he don't need no backup. He don't need no help. He don't need no Hulk. He got a Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, he, don't, he don't need no backup. But I thought he said, he said, he's the Avenger. I think sometimes we need to let God go back to being God in our lives. Let him take care of things we try to take in on our own uh, and just let God be the avenger for us. But the Bible said this. He said, matter of fact, he said that talk my own, not cause not the uncleanness, but in the holes. He said, but look, if you're a despised and ain't you, he said, it's me. Matter of fact, verse 9 said, but touch and brotherly love. Mm -hmm. You got no need I write out of you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Love one another. Somebody told me, they said, that's what's wrong now. All y'all do is practice love. I said, I wish we did practice love. Because yeah. if we did love and had that perfect love like Christ did, that's what's going to change the world. Can I get now, that's what the love of Jesus shown to a fallen man and woman. That's what's going to change the world today. He said, but look, you got that love. You know that. So you're taught. Of God love one another. In verse 10, indeed, you do it toward all the brethren. I see that. I see, that's a shame. Mm -hmm. How you gonna love everybody in the church house don't show love of God, nobody outside? That's a shame and a disgrace unto God. He said, Look, you got it right when it comes to all the brethren. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Amen. He said, You'll love more tomorrow than you do today. The love of God was so abundant that everybody we come in contact with, we fall in love with. I don't mean love physical, I mean love spiritual. Fall in love with their soul. Fall in love with them and sit and try to help them. Try to encourage them. Try to lift them up. He said, it's a way. He said, matter of fact, not only that, he said, you already have this, you know this thing. He said, verse 11, here we go. You study to be quiet. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yeah. It's funny because at work, yeah, I think it was last night, boy told me, he said, you know what? If they paid you to talk, 
in a week's time you can retire. I said, I'll take it as a compliment, sir. Yeah. But the scripture says, hey, come to town. Be quiet. He said, study to be quiet. It's funny because Shelly came out this morning and I was reading my Bible. I had preaching on my iPad and I was watching something on TV. So I had all the stuff going on one time. And she said, how can you focus? I said, I can't. <laughs> I'm going to patch all this together. I said, I'm going to get up and tell them Sunday morning that if you don't put somebody in a triangle choke, they're going to go to hell without Jesus. <laughs> you're watching fighting over here and reading the Bible here and doing this and getting everything off. He said, they come home where you got to study. Just be quiet. <laughs> Sometimes I don't like it a whole lot because I want to know that I'm alive. <laughs> and Shelly tells everybody I'm the loudest human being she's ever made. She said, everything he does is loud. Whether it's walking, whether it's breathing, whether it's eating. She said, you're the noisiest human being I've ever been around. I said, wait, I get older. All my stuff goes to popping and cracking and all that stuff like that. You didn't see nothing yet. But to come a point in our lives and I mentioned, well, we just got to be quiet. Because if we're always hustling, always bustling, then we don't hear from God. We got to learn to be quiet. You know why? Because being quiet ain't something that we're good at. Because being quiet means this. When you're quiet, you know what you're doing? You're listening to somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Or listening for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yes. He says, study mm -hmm. to be quiet. See, if we're going to hear from God, mm -hmm. there come a point in our life, we just got to be quiet and listen. Mm -hmm. Scripture said, He said, be still mm -hmm. and know mm -hmm. that I'm God. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you're going to say this way. I don't should we study to be quiet? He said, here we go. Do your own business. Yeah. I like it. If that was translated in day language, it would say you need to learn how to mind your own business. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Because one thing the Christians are good at doing, there's a difference in interceding on behalf of a fallen brother and sister and just being nosy. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get away? Yeah. <laughs> just, just being nosy. Yeah. There's a difference. And the Bible says this that we need to learn how to be quiet. Need to learn how to mind. Boy, it sounds like it must have been a bunch of backbiting, gossiping rascals going on back in. Mm -hmm. He said, But you got to learn how to do all these things. Matter of fact, he said, No, you got to mind your bitch. Work with your own hands. And you can't always depend on everybody else. Mm -hmm. There'll come a point. Well, you got to figure stuff out for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Work with your own hands. My grandfather, on my mother's side, he would take a piece of wood and turn it into a masterpiece. I've never seen somebody with such talent. Before they had the, the lays and all them things to him, you give him a piece of wood and he can make this. He'd take a case knife. <coughs> it might take him six months, yep. but as a case knife, wow. he can make this. Yeah. Everything he did, he did. Right. It was so funny. He would, if something tore, he never took nothing to nobody. Mm -hmm. He fixed it till it was ruined, mm -hmm. or fixed it till it spit. Yeah. But he never asked for help. Now, ain't, ain't saying nothing wrong here. But this generation today got what is so lazy. Yeah. Oh. 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 Don't know how to do nothing. Oh. Don't want to know how to do nothing. Yeah. Oh. Oh, everybody else coming and do it for them? Yeah. Everybody snooping at home doing everything? Yeah. I tell you what, yeah. we got to use our own hands. Yeah. We got to learn how to do stuff for ourselves. Yes. Matter of fact, that's what he said. He said, not only that, he tells us that be quiet, mind your business, work with your hands, and we command you, verse 20, that you may walk honestly. Mm -hmm. You see that? Told them it was out. Yes. That you appreciate what you got. That's right. That's right. Do you appreciate tonight what you got? Yeah. Yes. Everything God's given you. Yeah. Do you appreciate it? He said, but when you do things, when he would get done carving and things, he made ducks and trucks and cars and stuff, and they'd go to shows. When he got done, you know what he always did? I always like this. He put his name, he burned his name on the bottom of them. 
His initials. JFW, John Freeman Wales. Burn them on the bottom of them. You know why he done that? Because he was proud of the finished product. Yeah, that's right. When I yeah. thought about that, yeah. I thought about the, what J, Jesus saved me. Yeah. He put the Holy Ghost inside yeah. of me. Yeah. Yeah. What it was, it was burn marks yeah. saying I'm proud of him. And, yeah. and that's right. And I'm living inside of him and he's mine. Yeah. And he goes on to say this. He tells us, as a matter of fact, he said, verse 13, I wouldn't have had to be ignorant. Mm. Boy, it's a mouthful right there, ain't it? He said, I would not have you be ignorant, brethren. He said, just because you got all stuff together, just because you look good, just because you seem like you got together, he said, I don't want you to be ignorant one thing. Because truth be known, all this other stuff, it ain't going to matter if you miss this right here. He said, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. But well, let's face it. They hope. No doubt people die today. People are gonna die tonight. People are gonna die in the morning. They're gonna die until Jesus comes back and death is no more. And guess what's gonna happen? This is what I like. Bob Field, I told you, he's one of the wildest idiots I've ever known. <laughs> and he can tell you stuff, you know what, right, not what. But I left talking to him and I believed it. <laughs> and we was at Lowe's. This week, and I run into him. And him and his wife come over there, and we was talking. And, and before I could say anything to him, Shelly said, You know, Bob said, Brian's just like you said, he gets up and tells lies from the pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Is it a lie, Bob, if you really believe it? He said, Man, I've told so many stories now. This is what he said. He said, I got this deal with God. He said, before I tell something, I say, Lord, I'm going to tell this because I might not do it. But he said, surely somebody out there went through this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, so it ain't like long as somebody out there done this. <laughs> but <laughs> and I sit and I think sometimes, you know, that we must not be ignorant. Mm -hmm. And foolish when it comes to the things of God. No. But he said this. He said, There'll come a day. He said, well, God's going to do away with death. Mm -hmm. And he said, And on that day, he said, When mm -hmm. men, women, boys, and girls, down through the ages, all gathered for the judgment, he said, On that day, he said, You'll look around. You might see a man 10,000 years old. You might see Adam there. Mm -hmm. And you'll look at Adam and just say, when'd you get here, boy? Adam said, I got here this morning. When'd you get here? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got here this morning too. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because in God's city, time will be no more. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be a day. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we won't need tomorrow. Right. And yesterday will be no concern to us. What the Bible said is so. He said, I want you to be in He said, those who died, those who went on. He said, even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus. Amen. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. That's good enough for me right there. It don't have to say nothing else. I just believe Jesus. Anything he says, I believe. Yeah. And the Bible said, if we believe, the key to ever achieving salvation is believing. Yeah. Yeah. Believing. He said, if we believe. Believe what? Let's want to say, if we believe Jesus died and rose again, that's all we got to believe. Yeah. If we believe. See, because key is this. You can't believe he's a risen Lord if you don't ever believe he died. You can't believe he's a risen Lord if you don't ever believe that he's risen. Not that that's a word. But said, if we believe Jesus died and rose again, even so them which are asleep, Everybody's got different things what happened when 
you die, it don't make no difference. Amen. Just make sure when you die, you know Jesus. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. I didn't come here to discuss the theology. No. Yeah. Come, on. come to debate a doctrinal statement. He didn't come to make a statement. Yeah. Just make sure you know Jesus. And everything should be okay. Yeah. Just make sure you know Jesus. And it said, it said this. If we believe he died and rose again, even so then which are asleep. In Jesus will God bring with him. Yeah. It's never goodbye for a child of God. Yeah. Matter of fact, church sign of Saul said this. It's never goodbye. It's see you in the morning. Amen. Yeah. See you in the morning. And it said this. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord Amen. shall not prevent them which are asleep. Verse 16. Perhaps one of the greatest verses that God recorded in his word for the Lord himself. Yes. Here's where it gets personal. He said nobody else can't do it. This one's mine. He said for the Lord himself. That's right. God Almighty, the King of Glory Himself, going to take time out. Come on. Yeah, How about a God that loves you so much that He's going to He gonna take time out. Yeah. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. Step off His earthly throne. Come down the fallen man, the Bible says. And this one says, He Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout of the voice of all heaven. And the dead in Christ shall rise. Hallelujah! I can tell you that it don't stop at the grave. Life only begins at the grave. It don't end now. If you think your loved ones that died in Jesus are in a hole somewhere, honey, you're wrong. I come to you by God that will not leave you nor forsake you. The Bible said it ain't. The dead gonna get on up first. Yeah. Then we which are alive will remain. That's right. yeah. That's right. I'm like Billy Kelly, bless God, I love to be out in the graveyard when Jesus oh, comes back right. on the trump of God sounding and see that trump sounding in graveyards yeah. all over the world. Bodies yeah. yeah. get up all over the place. That's right, tombstones fall over. That's right, funeral directors have heart attacks. Yeah. There's grave after grave after grave yeah. of every child of God yeah. is busted open for them to get up and get out and be buried. With that glorified body, that new body, that transformed body, that body is like the one of Jesus. That body will never get sick. That body will never get old. That body is never gonna die. That body ain't gonna ever need anybody ever again. That body won't have to pay another bill. That body will never see another doctor. Go up to the funeral home. Thank God for the body. The new body. The Bible says when we see him, we shall be as he is. That's why he's gonna take off his robe of flesh. And put on that robe of rock. That's what I'm talking about. Bless God. Put it all over God's city. And I need a glorified body. And if having a glorified body and be with Jesus don't excite you, you've got problems. Got problems. If you do this and put on that, don't excite you, you've got problems. Here's the part I like. It's on the way from here to there, he's going to give us a ride. He <laughs> said, hey, what you're alive with? Should we call up the meeting there? And this is what I said. This is what I like. It said to be the Lord in the air. That means he's going to come where we are. He's going to show us the way. That's right. He's going to lead us and guide us and take us all the way. I don't know about nobody else, honey, but I'm excited over the fact that he loves me enough to come to where I am and show me the way. Show me the way. What a God. What a God. Hallelujah. What a God. 
Hell, I got easy. He said, so this company each other with his words. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Who's the company each other words? And when you get that company each other, he said, don't slap it out. He said, don't be on that. He said, this company each other words. Let him know that if you know Jesus, yeah. and he yeah. loves you, yeah. and you and him, yeah. and he and you, it's yeah. okay. She said, I, I've just done so much stuff wrong in my life. She said, I've got off the, the path. Let's go. We've all got off the path. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Don't never think you better than nobody else on the side of the road. And we think sometimes that God can't use us. And I heard this little story today. And preacher had a motorcycle for sale. He put an ad in the paper. Going to sell a motorcycle and said, man showed up and he said, can I come look at it? Yeah. Man come to the house, pulled up. He had one of them. He said, I call it a fancy Italian car. Then he pulled up in the car and said, Jerry. He said, that's a convertible top. He said, man, that was one of the sweetest cars that had some other scratch on it. He said, man. He said, what do you want with the motorcycle? He said, I told him the price I wanted for him. He said, tell you what I'll do. I want to trade you straight up. He said, I thought he must be drunk. He said, I will make this deal before he sold us up. I'll never have no chance this car. He said, I said, oh, okay, let's trade. He said, but let me see the title first. <coughs> he said, so we exchange titles. He said, look through mine, everything was good. He said, it looks all good here. He said, I got his title. You know what was across it? Salvaged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I saw that. I said, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, what salvage mean? He said, I don't know. It was like it when I bought it. <laughs> he said, well, I'm going to call the courthouse. And I'm going to find out what salvage means. So I right, go ahead. So I called the courthouse, said we about to exchange titles. He said, this title here said it's a salvage on it. Can you explain to me what salvage is? She said, yeah. He said, salvage means that at one point in time, that vehicle was pristine. It was perfect from front to back and top to bottom. But somewhere along the way, it took some dents. Took some things, had a few scrapes, and finally had an incident happen to it so bad that the owner no longer wanted it. Matter of fact, said it was so bad nobody wanted it. He says, or she said, so what happened was they take it to the junkyard and leave it to do one or two things. Set up a scrap metal tool and said then the junkyard would either crush it or they could selling out the parts. She says, but every once in a while, by chance, but you know God doesn't have no chance. Right. By chance, an individual will come out of it and say for some strange reason, that individual will take a liking to that vehicle that's a no longer used to anybody else. Can't get away from it. Is that what they'll do is they'll take that savage 
vehicle out. They'll take it back to a body shop and they'll cut off all the imperfections. They'll cut off all the damaged parts. They'll go back and get brand new parts. And when they put it back together, it says it's good news. But we have to put salvage on it because at one point in time, we're going to have what? He said, she said, sir, sir, are you still there? He said, oh yeah, I'm still here. She said, so do you understand what salvage means, sir? He said, let me get this straight. He said, you're telling me. There was one out there that at one time somebody loved. Yeah. Somebody thought a lot of. But some incidents happened. Some bad things happened in their life. Some stuff happened. Got cast to the side. Got downtrodden. Got looked over. And then one day the owner decided I don't want them no more. Yeah. They got took to this junkyard here. Got dropped off at this scrap. He said, and you're telling me that while they're scrap, they was one that just happened to come by. Yep. Yeah. Happened to see. Yeah. Oh. Come on. That sounds vehicle in bad shape. Yeah. And knowing that it needed help. Yep. Yeah. Or it's like a load. Yep. That one came in. That one cut out all the bad parts. That one cut out all the worst that's in there. You're telling me uh, that that one put all the new stuff in there. You're telling me, ma'am. That when that owner, the new owner got done, that that thing left better than ever was to start with. She said, yes sir, that's what I'm telling you. He said, yeah. the woman said, so do you understand sounds wrong? He said, lady, before Jesus, I was That God can't give you a future. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Can't take all those imperfections, right. cut them out, exactly. and put something new yeah. on the inside yeah. that'll make you better than you ever have been. Oh, yeah. Nobody but Jesus can do that tonight. Yeah. Just a